Hello and welcome to day 119 of Dungeon 23, the series where you make a room of a mega dungeon every day for a year. Today's going to be a very easy room for the party to get through because there's no real harm in this room unless a wandering monster goes into it. And there's not even really any challenges there. There's a few skill checks that could be made, but nothing super serious. And there's only three things in the room which we could get into. The first thing, and the most noticeable, is this campfire here. And if you walk up to it, you notice it doesn't give off any heat, although it is quite bright. That's because it is perpetual flame. This campfire is magically lit with the perpetual flame spell. While it does shed light, the light does not produce any heat. The fire is basically room temperature. It is safe to touch. It cannot be used to cook food, boil water, burn things. It doesn't spread. It can't even be put out. It can be covered like a blanket or like a bucket or whatever, but it doesn't go out even if it's, you know, denied oxygen unless it is hit with a dispel magic. Just a regular level 3 dispel magic, which again, the party may or may not have access to depending on whether or not they used the dispel magic scroll from earlier in the dungeon and this is mainly here to establish that while this area looks like an abandoned campsite it was actually like specifically designed by the wizard to resemble that because adventurers are not going to spend the i believe it's like 50 gold pieces in ruby dust to make a perpetual flame on a campfire. They might make one on a weapon, so that their weapon is also a torch, or just on a torch, or on a helmet so it looks cool and sheds light, or an object, or basically anything they could take with them. They're not gonna use it on a campfire. And we get to see a little bit more of how the wizard thinks in just a second when we get to the chest that's in the room. So, this chest is locked with a DC-14 lock. The key is actually on a necklace worn by the skeleton that's in this room, and we'll get to him in a second. Now, this chest contains a bottle of fancy wine that is worth a total of 75 gold pieces because, you know, it's really fancy, it's antique, it's ornate, all that jazz. I say to give things that probably don't have a value, more value because that's how treasure works. Or maybe the party keeps it, you know? Because it's mainly just a trade good, but people like collecting things and players like their characters have fun food and drinks. And speaking of food, it also contains 1d4 plus 1 rations, and also there is a silver diningware set, which includes two forks, two knives, two spoons, two cups, two plates, basically the whole shebang. And altogether, that's worth 120 gold pieces. Now, as the party rummages through this set, there's a DC-12 investigation check needed to find a small handwritten note at the bottom of the chest. And it reads, Adventurers keep dying of starvation, need to leave more food around. And basically what that means is, adventurers were coming into the dungeon and dying because there's not enough food, because they're unprepared. And the wizard actively changed the dungeon to have more food and resources within it to keep adventurers here, to keep them adventuring. Why? Who knows, he's just a crazy old wizard, maybe he has a reason, maybe he doesn't. Maybe we'll find out later, maybe we won't. This is all kind of day by day. Now, the last thing is the skeleton, which is pretty simple actually. His main thing is that he does have the key to the chest, and this inanimate skeleton, he does not have any magic. It's not going to come up and jump the party. It's not going to stab anybody. It's just a regular dead person who is a skeleton. It's wearing studded leather armor in case someone wants to steal that. Well, actually, is it really stealing if they're dead? Maybe. I don't know. And a sheathed dagger in its belt, so they get a dagger and a sheath for it. Also, in the skeleton's hand is a bag of 4d6 plus 4 silver pieces. And there's no DC to find that. You could just find that because it's quite apparent. And there is a DC 12 investigation check needed to find the necklace which has the key around the neck. Because it's kind of like in the rib cage, kind of. Because it's, you know, there's no like torso really to kind of have the necklace where it would be normally. It's just kind of like lying on top of it. So it could be easily missed because it's not very large, too. So 
Like I said, that's a DC-12 to find it. Skeleton, pretty easy to deal with. It's not even alive. Quickly going back to the campfire, maybe the party could try to like pick it up and carry it with them, but I mean, it's probably just like actually attached to the floor. Like the magic is actually done on the floor. So you can move like the sticks and the rocks, the flames can still be there. I don't know. It depends on what the party wants to do. And yeah, that's basically the room. Very easy, a really good arrest spot, if not for the fact that there are no doors in this room. But yeah, pretty safe, all things considered. And this has been day 119. So if you want to see more videos like this, then like, comment, subscribe. That way they'll show up in your recommendations more often, hopefully. You could also turn on notifications, but whether or not that works is a bit sketchy. YouTube's weird like that. Or you could always just come back tomorrow because these videos are a daily occurrence. So yeah, I apologize for the poor quality. It's not going to improve.